So in the last video, we had a look at swing components and containers. We built this JFrame application and in it we added all a load of different types of swing components and a few of the containers as well. Now we laid this out in grid layout. So we had a five by five grid, but because there were only so many uh, different components added to the frame, it laid it out in a three by five arrangement like this. What we're going to look at in this video is layout managers and how we can lay things out rather than just being in a grid like this. So let's get straight into it. So I've cut this application back down and I've cut it down to just the frame. So we just have the J frame and there's no components in the frame. Now I'm going to add a few components and I'm going to use the set bounds method to say where these components are. The first thing I'm going to do is set the layout of the frame to be null. So I'm going to remove the layout manager from the frame. So I've added a few more uh, components to this window. I've got two labels and two buttons. And you can see here that we've laid things out absolutely with the coordinates that we want things to be and the sizes of the components. Now the problem with this is that really when we're uh, working with Swing, we want to be doing it in a sort of platform independent way. So we don't know whether our application is going to be displaying on a Windows desktop with a widescreen display, or maybe it will be on a Linux system which has a different set of fonts. Maybe the screen will be smaller. Maybe it'll be displayed on a tablet or maybe even a mobile phone. So we want the display to be flexible. And when we're doing absolute layout like this, what we're really doing is designing something that looks good for the size of window that we're using. And that's okay, but what we really want to do is use layout managers to tell the system how we want the screen to be laid out and then let the layout manager do the layout for us. Here's the Java documentation from Oracle about what layout managers do. So layout managers basically do two things. They calculate the sizes for a container and then they lay out the containers children. So we add a layout manager to a container. Then we add components to that container and the layout manager will handle the layout for us. Now when we look at a few examples, you'll get the idea. So here's a list of some of the more commonly used layout managers in Java. There are others and you can implement your own, but these ones will act as a good example. So we'll go through each of these in turn. So first we'll start with flow layout. Flow layout lays out components in a single row, starting a new row if its container is not sufficiently wide. So I'm going to convert my J frame to use flow layout. So the first thing I'm going to do is set the layout to flow layout. So I say set layout and then I create a new flow layout object. So set layout, new flow layout. Now I want to remove the bounds and just add the objects to the panel as before and the flow layout will control where the objects appear. So now if I run, I can see it's laid my components out in a single row. I just have four next to each other, label one, button one, label two and button two. If I make the window too narrow so that it won't fit, it will start to go down into the next row. So it's just putting them one after the other, laying them out in a, in a flow fashion. So that's flow layout, quite a simple layout. So the next layout manager we'll look at is grid layout. Grid layout makes a bunch of components equal size and displays them in the requested number of rows and columns. So we looked at grid layout in the last video. So with grid layout, I set the layout to grid layout, but this takes some parameters, how many rows and how many columns. Now because I've got four components, I'm gonna have two rows and two columns. 
Now I don't need to do anything else. I just say we want two by two. Now I run it and I've got label one, button one, label two and button two. So the grid layout has made all the components the same size and it's just put them in a two by two grid. If I make the window bigger or smaller, the components stay the same size. It's just divided the entire space into two by two grid. So that's grid layout. Next layout we'll look at is grid bag layout. This is like a more complicated version of grid layout, which gives us more control. So it aligns components by placing them within a grid of cells like grid layout did. However, it allows components to span more than one cell and the rows in the grid can have different heights and grid columns can have different widths. Now grid bag layout is divides things up into a grid, but it does give us more control. Uh, what we do with grid bag layout is we set the layout to grid bag layout and we make a grid bag constraints object. Then each time we add an object, we give it the grid bag constraints with the add method. Now the grid bag constraints object has these various parameters that we can use. So grid X and grid Y specifies the row and column of the upper left corner of the component. Grid width and height tells us a number of columns for the components display area. Then we've got a whole bunch of other things. So like padding and insets and anchors and things. So if you want to see exactly what you could do with grid bag layout, I suggest you look at the Java doc. But for now, I'm going to use the grid X, grid Y, grid width and grid height. And I'm going to set it each time I add a component. Okay, so there's an example of grid bag layout. So I've set, now I tend to find grid bag layout is quite difficult to use um, and quite confusing. But here is what I've done. I've set my label one at grid position zero, zero with a grid width and grid height of one. Then button one is at grid X position one and Y position zero and it's one by one again. But label two is it X position two and grid Y position zero and it's one wide and two high. So label two is now taking up two rows. And finally button two is at grid X zero, grid Y one, so one level down. And it's two wide and one down. I've also said for button two to fill using the horizontal axis to fill. So that's why button two has been resized to be, to take up the whole space of the grid. So you can see how uh, with grid bag layout, you've got a bit more control. And some of the examples in um, the Java doc give you ideas about how you can use grid bag, grid bag layout. So it is a it is a powerful layout manager, but I personally find it quite frustrating. It doesn't always seem to do what I want it to do. And sometimes I can be fighting with it. But that's grid bag layout. And if you do want to use grid bag layout, then hold on to the end of this video and I'll show you an easier way. At the end of the video, we'll be looking at the window builder tool in Eclipse and we can use window builder to lay out things more easily than manually programming them with grid bag layout. The next layout we'll look at is border layout. Border layout places components in up to five areas, top, bottom, left, right, and center. Extra space is placed in the center area. 
So the next layout is border layout, which is a nice layout to explain. So I set the layout into border layout. I can get rid of everything to do with the grid bag constraints. And now what we have is a screen divided into border layout and border layout consists of a center, a north, east, south and west. So I'm going to add border, I'm going to add label one with the parameter border layout north. I'm going to add button one with the parameter west. I'm going to add label two with the parameter south and button two, I use center. Spelt the American way. So here we can see label one is at the top of the screen. So that is the north and label two is at the bottom. That's the south. Button one is at the west and button two is in the center. So this is a, a powerful uh, layout um, and it's how we would very often lay out our main window because maybe you'll have some toolbars or something at the top and you may have a status bar at the bottom and then the main working area can be you might want something to stick at the side of the screen and then the main panel might be in the center so border layout is a uh, one of my favorite ones it's one i use all the time so that's border layout the next layout is box layout. This puts components in a single row or column. It respects the components requested maximum sizes and also lets you align components. So I'm going to set the layout to a new box layout and for the constructor for box layout I'm going to give it the container. And now for the container we want the content pane of this frame. So this get content pane. And we also specify the axis. So I'm going to say box layout y axis. And then I'm going to remove the parameters for the border layout. And when I run this, we can see that it's lined things up on the y axis. And with box layout, we can also do alignment. So set alignment X, left alignment. So now I've added alignment X values to each of the components. So label ones left alignment, button one is center, label two is right, and button two is center. What that means is label one's left hand side aligns with button one's center, label two's right, and button two's center. So there we've got the box layout to align things. And we can also use box layout on the X axis and then we do top and bottom alignment. So I'll just demonstrate that. So there we can see the top of label one is aligned with the center of button one, and the bottom of label two, and the center of button two. So that's how we can use box layout. And the final layout we'll look at in this video is card layout. It lets you implement an area that contains different components at different times. The card layout, we can imagine our components stacked on top of each other like a deck of cards. So this time I'm gonna create our layout manager, but I'm going to keep a reference to it. So 
set the layout to be cards. And each time I add a component, I'm going to give it a string, an ID string, label one. So now we can select which card we want to show by using the cards layout. So I say cards show the container parent, which is this dot get content pane. And then the name of the card that we want to show according to the name that we gave it before. So I'm going to show button one. Now when we run this, we can see button one and the other cards which contain label one and label two and button two are underneath. We'll be doing um, listeners for the buttons in the next lesson, but just to demonstrate how the cards work, I'm going to add a listener to this button. So I'm going to say button one, add action listener, new action listener. We'll be taking a look at exactly what this does in the next video but this is just when we press this button one this method in this action listener will fire and what I'm going to do if we press button one is I'm going to get the content pane from the frame and show button two so now when we run the cards, we can see button one, when I press it, button two comes on top. So you could imagine how useful that can be where you have a window and you want different things to be able to be displayed. Of course here I'm using cards layout and I'm only using one component for each card, but we could have a container. So we could have entire panels laid out in cards and that's a very convenient way for us to be able to switch from screen to screen in one container. So that's cards layout. Now there's much more to each of these layout managers. There's various properties that you can set and much more that you can do with them. So I would encourage you to look at the official Java documentation on the Oracle page and have a look at what you can do with the different layout managers. So it may seem as if the layout managers are quite limited in what they can do, but don't forget we can have containers within containers and each container can have a separate layout. I've taken this image from the Wikipedia page for Java Swing. I'm going to attempt to copy this display by using various layouts and containers, and then we'll have a look at what I come up with and I'll explain what I've done. So I'm going to scroll through the code now and show you where the panels are that I've added. So this is the main panel. To the main panel, we add a border with the caption panel caption. And we set that main panel into grid, li grid layout two by two. This is panel one, which has a border with the title panel. That's in grid layout one by two and to that we're adding a list. Then we're making another panel, a radio button panel. Uh, that radio button panel is in box layout and the radio buttons are added to it. We then make another panel, set that in border layout and add the radio button panel in the center. And we add a button to the south. Then we add that to the original panel one and add panel one to the main panel. We've then got a tabbed pane. We've got tab pane one, which is a panel. Tab pane one is in border layout. And we have a tab pane checkbox panel, which is in box layout. And that has our checkboxes added to it. Tab pane one has a checkbox panel added in the center. Tab pane one is in 
border layout and it has a slider added to the south and the tabs are added to the tab pane and the tab pane is added to the main panel panel 3 is in box layout and it has a text field a password field and a combo box panel 4 is in border layout and panel 3 is added to that north just so that these fields appear in the top rather than centered and then panel 4 is added to main panel and finally a text area is added to main panel and then main panel is added to the frame so that should give you an idea of how we go about constructing panels and containers and putting containers in other containers and setting the different layouts on panels we've managed to copy this layout by using just simple java layouts now the final thing i wanted to show you in this video is an eclipse plugin called window builder you can get to it by going help install new software and putting this address into the work with dialog i'll just call this window builder and we'll load this and I'll click both checkboxes, click next and install the plugin with all the default options. I'll wait for it to finish installing and restart Eclipse. Now the window builder plugins installed, I can say I want new other window builder application window. I give this as a name. And now I have the option to design the window with tools like this. So in this example, I'm using border layout and I drop a label and a button onto the window. This generates all the code in the background, which makes it easy for me to design the window. Okay, so I hope this video has given you a good idea of how you can use layout managers to lay out your swing components on your containers. That's it for now, so thanks for watching.